Welcome back to Look Up Business. Thank you very much for still sticking with us here at Look Up TV. And now on to the big conversation for this particular episode. I'd like to introduce it like this. Now, according to Statista, it will be viewed that the average amount or the value of the film industry was almost $76.7 million in the year 2022. Now, move away from that. And let's look at exactly what is happening here locally. Now, Kenya's local film industry, however, continues to suffer in difference from its own. And the only reason as to why majority of analysts look at it from that perspective is because there's a weak, big screen culture in the country. It, it will not be argued that Kenyans do not like their own. They do. But then analysts looking at this particular phenomenon will say, because they do not also adopt the big screen culture, that's why the performance of the local film industry continues to suffer. Now, today, the question we ask is why that even with international filming locations, that's one, and also brilliant producers and thespians to showcase, why are we pegging the success of the local industry just to a few films years back? As the conversation that we're having tonight and to help us then go deep into that conversation we are joined on set by john the legend filmmaker and producer how are you doing i'm doing good sir how are you happy to have you around man thank Fantastic. you for having me here's the thing if you listen to my introduction people would agree that indeed if you're looking at the local film industry you have to travel way back and look at just a couple of films that have, had, that have had a big, big screen success. Let me begin from there. Can we blame it on the lack of big screen culture in the country? Or there's something that we're looking at that is not essentially packed to the big uh, screen culture? Well, uh, what's happening uh, in, in essence in the film industry here is, uh, is a lack of interest from uh the government on the governmental level uh investors and filmmakers is uh there's no cohesiveness there's no bridge between these two uh uh, uh organizations these three uh places so what's happening is in a film industry such as uh, uh kenya's film industry yeah it's quite young uh, if, you, if you compare the Kenyan film industry to the American film industry or uh, Bollywood, mm -hmm. uh, how old is the Kenyan film industry? Roughly 50 years, 60 years perhaps. Yeah? So it hasn't matured yet to a point where it becomes a viable uh, sort of like uh, uh, vehicle for investment. So therefore uh, venture capitalists, uh, film investors, they do not see the path to, to, uh, to fruitful uh, investments uh, whereby now the culture will suffer cinema big screen cinema as you put it people don't see the value in it in terms of uh, because if if the value is not there you're not going to attract the investors and people are not going to uh, uh, essentially see the path to say uh, for instance if uh, somebody wants to invest 20 million shillings well, what will they do with it They'll invest probably in an apartment building and uh, in a condo. Interesting. You see, because they see that there's something tangible. Where in the movie industry, that tangibility is not there; it's not present. So they, they do not see a correlation to putting an idea together, a script, a film, shoot it, and then show it on the big screen. Therefore, the culture suffers because the support system is not there to support the culture. Yes. Pretty much. Let's move on to the next area that majority of people, and even before we get there, uh, legends, from where you sit, it's mm -hmm. a conversation that has been going. I mean, you have to go back to 2012 to get Nairobi Half-Life. Right. That had a massive success in the big screen uh, in the country, right. and also even got international recognition. So from there, we thought, ha, huh, a springboard then for local film success. But since then, uh -uh, we haven't seen that much. From where you sit it today, mm. Where do you think 2023 will take the local film space? 
Right. See, 2023 is going to be very interesting. It's a very interesting year. Now, with the with the advent of uh, AR and AI, there are possibilities that didn't exist before. Uh, entry level cinema cinema uh, cameras and and editing suites are getting a lot more affordable. Yes. The knowledge base is there, and now with accelerated learning, that means a lot of filmmakers they don't even need to go to film school anymore. They could just essentially go to I guess what we call YouTube University yeah. and learn a few tricks and then learn on the job i'm not saying do not go to film school film school is a very good uh, again avenue to learn the culture to learn the lingo to learn the language because filmmaking is another language you have to learn the language you have to learn the, the 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 process yeah to be an effective filmmaker whether at every level whether you are a writer whether you are a camera operator a producer all that you have to know the language now uh, 2023 is very interesting because now uh, the film uh, uh, ecosystem has the the uh, the level playing field has been set. Yes. Now, whether you're in uh, Nairobi or you're in uh, Los Angeles or Mumbai, you have access to the same technology pretty much. Whether it's in a small uh, package like a mirrorless camera or DSLR camera or uh, uh, entry-level cinema camera, you are able to produce phenomenal content. And there are, at this point, there are no excuses not to be able to actually leverage your your uh, uh, your network, yeah, whether it's through uh, your friends, your colleagues, your acquaintances, to say, hey, I need, I need to borrow a camera to shoot a short film this weekend. It's entirely feasible. And it's by building on top of these building blocks that you'll be able to, in fact, leverage yes. your, your, your film uh, making potential. And it, will, it, it has a compound effect where one film led to another, a short film to another short film, and eventually to, uh, to a feature film. And the reason you mentioned Ni Nairobi Half-Life, like that was 2012. Was why has it, yeah, why has it taken really 10 long? years? And uh, almost 11 years. Why, hasn't it, why has it taken so long to, to uh, achieve uh, another level of success, such as what happened in 2012? The reason being, uh, people sit on their laurels for too often. When you achieve success, you have to uh, look to the future, right? Or in the present, yeah? Because you, ha you have to create in order to create to, 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 um, to achieve success. You cannot rest on your laurels and your past glory and thinking, well, this is going to carry me over into the next, you know, it's been a decade. Now what's happening in this decade, right, since Ni Nairobi Half-Life, it's not, it hasn't translated to what's happening now because, again, it's all about the support system. And uh, let me put it to you this way. For instance, the film industry in Kenya, right, the, on the governmental level, there are no tax incentives for filmmakers yes. to create films, mm -hmm. right? But did you know that in Europe, there are about 15 to 17 countries that offer tax breaks for filmmakers at every level, whether it's, uh, uh, whether it's Belgium, whether it's uh, France, whether it's Ireland, whether it's uh, uh, Belarus. A lot of these Eastern Bloc countries offer anywhere from 25 to 35 percent, some of them 40 percent tax break tax incentive. And here's where it becomes very interesting, because when you look at tax incentives, I think what's happening here in Kenya, the government doesn't really see the path to recuperating that tax, those tax uh, shillings. I was going to say dollars, yes. but shillings, right? So what happens is, like, let's say a, a crew of filmmakers come into the country. They want to shoot a feature film. They come in at 100 film uh, crew, cast and crew into the country. By giving them a 35% tax break on their film, and also there's a tax break on the pre-production and production, and also if they want to actually utilize post-processing facilities within the country, they also get another tax break, right? For VFX, they get another tax break. That happens in Canada, that happens in, in, in Europe, that happens in Ireland, in Australia, Austria, all these places, yeah? Anywhere from 15, uh, 20, 25, 30 to 35, some countries even 40% tax break. Yeah. Here's what happens. Once you introduce these tax breaks, now those film crews, they have an incentive to come and shoot into your locality. And what happens, 100 deep as cast and crew, now they'll need accommodation. They will need uh, food and beverage, entertainment, 
drivers, all these. So you're creating some fringe employment within the industry. Mm -hmm. And what happens with all these, these fringe benefits you create? Now, the government will actually collect tax from all these fringe. So that 35% tax break you afford to the film crew, now that money is recuperated twofold, threefold, even fivefold from fringe taxes that you collect from these, uh, um, uh, from these fringe uh, 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 consumables that the, the crew consumes, whether it's entertainment, they go to a bar on their day off, what do they do? Entertainment, they drink, they, 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 they buy food. And even on the way out, they go to the to the market. They, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. They they buy uh, little trinkets. They go yes. to the Maasai market. They buy trinkets. They buy souvenirs. Again, once these markets, they sell these things. What happened? They pay taxes on. It. So it's there's an influx of cash, and also this tourism. Kenya has some of the most beautiful scenery. You go from mountaintops to valleys to yes. dormant volcanoes. And, and that's internationally, by the way. Yes. yes. Some of them that have been used by other firms that have been shot here locally, right. and they're going to acclaim international success. Exactly. You like to think that that would be a marketing platform for the country's film industry? It has not. It has been. not been. But why is that? Why do you think that is? That's because the government doesn't really see the path to monetizing the, because these are national treasures. These yeah. are, you know, I mean, you got, you got sand dunes, right? You have uh, lush forests, you have mountaintops, you have the coastal uh, region, pristine beaches. These are all great locations. And I guarantee you, if these uh, locations are showcased in uh, blockbuster movies or even television shows, uh, uh, the, the, um, the tourism sector will we'll, we'll see a boom. Pretty much, isn't it? Let me, uh, let, me, let me point you to one of those industries that have been international success and so that we can go back and ask ourselves the question, is there something that we need to copy? From what you've said, mm -hmm. if you look at even the top 20 box office year in, year out, there's one that keeps on dominating it, Bollywood. Yes. And now, every time you look at these particular films that they keep on producing, you say, proper investment, proper casting, proper locations, proper technology. Is it possible for the Kenyan film industry to say, can't we pick a couple of the things that they're doing right, right there in Bollywood, and then use that as our marker then to also getting into the market? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, the Kenyan film industry could take a page out of the playbook of uh, Bollywood, yes. even Nollywood. Even Nollywood now. Yes. I want to talk about that as well. Uh, when it comes to Africa film industry, isn't absolutely, it? they've taken it over. I mean, uh, you, can, you, can, you can sit back and say, "Well, Nollywood is all it is there." Whether it you is like there. It or not. Yes. Absolutely, because now yeah. they're they're one of the biggest GDP contributors in the Nigerian economy. And that that being said, they also have the the support. Of, of the the local base yes. that it, again consumes their their content day in day out, but also th their approach to content creation to filmmaking is a little bit different, uh, to, you know, from that of uh, Bollywood or even yes. Hollywood. Mm -hmm. What happens is a lot a lot of these movies go direct to DVD or direct to VOD. Yeah, again, we can't neglect that because uh, whether you like it or not, this is the 21st century. So a lot of people know this, this is a powerful device. A lot of people consume their media through tablets or through their phones, mm -hmm. right? Big screen, of course, you cannot neglect big screen because it's a, it's a different experience, yeah? You, you, go to a, you go to the theater, you buy your popcorn, you buy your drink, and then you, you know, with your significant other or, you know, and, or with, with a group of friends and you go and you enjoy a cinematic uh, uh, um, smorgasbord, yes. so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, now, in Nigeria, uh, I, I, I've never been to Nigeria, so I don't quite know the, the layout of, you know, in terms of big screen culture. I don't know what it's like. But for a fact, I know that, you know, a lot of these movies go direct to, even to YouTube, to uh, VOD platforms, direct to DVD still. Yes. Yeah. So I think Kenya could actually adopt the same culture. I'm not saying go and build, you know, uh, uh, 20,000 uh, big screens. It's, it's not feasible at this point, you know, because right now you'd be playing catch up. Uh, the movie industry in America, big, big screen is a, is a culture. It's been there since the since the 40s yes. yeah mm -hmm. to, to this day i mean you have uh, magic johnson theaters i mean he's got screens all across you know uh, i think over 
almost 50 states, right? So the culture has been there already, but now the VOD, the digital delivery systems are there. Again, film does not have to be consumed solely on big screen because now usually what happens, there's a theatrical release, then eventually it, it uh, migrates to you know secondary screens and then, then it goes to uh, DVD release or VOD platforms. Yes. And even things like Netflix, again, uh, came onto the market and they saw a niche and then they inserted themselves into that niche and then they're, they're being really successful at it. And now you have the Hulus, the, the Disney Plus is, yes. uh, you know, all these other platforms. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the Kenyan film industry could take a, a page out of every single book. Pretty much. And then do a, a, a hodgepodge mm -hmm. of all these technologies and bring them together. And whether you're going to implement big screen culture, well, not as to the extent of the Americas or, or Bollywood, but you could still implement that culture where you have, you still have a theatrical release, but yes. also don't neglect the digital platforms and, and, and so on and so forth and penetrate these platforms uh, at, at every level, yes. whether, you know, whether it's in the city of Nairobi, whether it's in the, uh, you know, in, in other provinces or you know, there's no provinces here. Uh, there used to be. Right. Yeah. Counties. Yeah. Yeah. Counties. Right. Counties right. right. So mm -hmm. in, in, in that sense, you have to cater to, uh, to the people, what's accessible to them in term, you know, in terms of uh, access to, to technology this is it this is what is That's why a majority of them are exactly which, which is exactly what i want to talk to you about then because with the introduction of these devices mm. you're consuming content on demand as you go by there's now netflix which you would agree mm. that is a big culture now right here in the country absolutely you gotta be careful about it to answer this question i've sat right here in the studio and i've spoken to a film producer who got the phone onto Netflix last year. It's one of a kind. And in fact, they're celebrating and they say, wow, we are now into Netflix as well. Can I ask you this? With the criteria that Netflix then uses to actually onboard films on their platforms, mm -hmm. they, haven't clear, they haven't created Netflix Nairobi, Netflix Kenya. So that now when you go into Netflix, then you only see the Kenyan films that are in Netflix. That hasn't been that. Right. Because once you're there, you're competing with also films from the different parts of the world. That's well. right, that's right. You've got to be careful that you answer this. Mm -hmm. Do you think with the entry of Netflix now worldwide in Kenya, is it going to kill the film industry or it's going to prop it up? Great question. Uh, the, the introduction of Netflix um, in the Kenyan, on the Kenyan landscape yes. is, uh, is a good and a bad, right? Is a good side of it and is a bad side of it. Let's talk about the good side. The good side is is uh, is about it, it, it introduces uh, it, it gives us accessibility, right? If if let's say any Kenyan filmmaker wants to place a film on on the platform, it is feasible, but you have to follow a stringent process Indeed. to onboard your film. That's the that's the good the the possibilities there. Now the bad part about it, the bad side of it is the fact that, as you mentioned, uh, Netflix does not have a Netflix, Netflix Kenya, Kenya mm -hmm. where they do, they do have Netflix uh, France, they have Netflix um, Belgium, they have Netflix of Singapore, yes. they have Netflix, all these other localities. And the reason that exists, the reason they have their own Netflix uh, branch in those localities, that's because the government in those localities insisted on setting up such a structure because again remember uh, film is not just entertainment film also encompasses culture it encompasses uh, entertainment of course uh, uh, knowledge right it's edutainment and all, again it's not so much uh, a, a, a preachy sort of approach to, to, to culture or to teaching. But yes. uh, again, there are certain things that are subtle, right? That's why it's called programming. Certain programming is being, uh, is being put out there unbeknownst to us, but mm -hmm. subconsciously certain, certain processes are put in place to, to, to uh, either liberate or enslave our minds, you see? So now, the the governmental bodies that govern the film industry in Kenya, they have to step up and say, listen, you are actually selling memberships into the country. Though the countrymen of Kenya, they need to see representation. They need to see themselves on uh, their, like you mentioned, 
there needs to be a section where it, this is Kenyan films produced in Kenya, of course, commissioned by Netflix. Yes. And, and again, let me give you an example. For instance, in France, before Netflix could actually penetrate that market, there were certain guidelines that they had to follow. First of all, if you're introducing any film into the country, it has to be dubbed in French. Not abroad, but you have to hire local voice artists to dub the film. It has to be dubbed in a studio in France. In France. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah. all these things were, these were stipulations. They had to do these things. They had to put them in place before they could set up shop. They also had to set up a branch of Netflix into France to produce local French movies for the platform. But in Kenya, nobody, nobody's advocating for that. No one's pushing Netflix. Of course, Netflix is not going to hand you everything on a silver platter unless you demand it. Not don't ask for it. The Kenyan film industry has they have to demand it. It has to be in, it has to be in the law yes. before you set up shop here. Yes. You have to do these things. You have to make sure you establish a Kenyan studio, you know, uh, set up by Netflix. You have to make sure uh, the, uh, there are fair practices as well because I know of certain films that were onboarded in Kenya, they were paid peanuts compared to what the same level of excellence that was produced somewhere in the Eastern Bloc. They get way more money for their film than the Kenyan filmmakers. But again, I think also uh, it's sort of like a, uh, something that happens even in the music industry where yes. you want to get a foot in the door so you'll accept certain deals because you want to have that stamp. Oh, I'm on Netflix. But you, you're on Netflix. Netflix is, Netflix is capitalizing on your creation, on your intellectual property, where you're not being remunerated properly for your hard oh, work. The product that you're putting up. Yes. Pretty much. I've got to point you out to what is working in the country. Television production. I mean, there's a market there. Mm. I mean, when you talk to television production producers, they will tell you, yeah, because for them, it's easier for them to say, well, if we can put it on, on, on the big screen, then essentially let's go to other modes of distribution. They're using Facebook now, they're using Twitter now, they're using YouTube, which is a big honor for them as well. So when it comes to the show's market mm. in the country, TV stations are taking them up. Right. Online platforms are taking them up. So you can't say that there isn't something that really works in that direction, which is why this question that will be quite important do you think it's time that the film industry then said, if big screen is not going to work for us, then let's change our mode of distribution. Probably go the Nigeria way or go the show's production way in the country. Right. Well, interesting, uh, because again, see, the TV production houses, they sort of have, they got it right in, yeah. that, in that sense, because yeah. they realize, okay, we're not going to fight with uh, uh, the, the other branch of, of the industry, which is, you know, big screen, like long format uh, creation, which is, you know, feature films and so on and so forth. So they opted to, uh, to go the ep episodic r route. And that works very well. But even then, I find um, there are certain things that could be done to streamline things and to make things better, or also to to to, uh, to establish a, a you know uh, um, uh, the parameters where the actors will, will be paid properly, the 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 production cycle will be will be less grueling because again, once you start cutting corners in terms of uh, uh, a grueling schedule of, of shooting episode after episode after episode, I mean there's nothing wrong with that. You can batch shoot, but yes. then the working conditions have to be. Uh, um, uh, they have to be adequate for for you know the crew the well-being of the crew and and and, and cast but again the uh the tv producers they they have that part right where now they they realize okay this is a uh, this is a, a, a something that's working let's just focus on that but i think there there needs there also needs to be innovation things have to be uh, taken up a notch where you could, uh, across the board, whether it's through uh, the Actors Guild, whether it's through uh, the Teamsters, whether it's through, you know, different unions of the filmmakers, these things have to be put in place to uh, ensure that the quality of um, the uh, production uh, doesn't stagnate, yes. but it keeps going higher and higher. Right. Fantastic. Let me come to a point that you mentioned, technology, fast moving. Mm. And you say it's getting cheaper, 
But then at the rate at which it's moving fast, again, for an industry that wants to catch up, mm -hmm. well, you find yourself being left behind. True. Talk about, you spoke about AI, you spoke, spoke about different technology, editing and production technology that is coming into the market, which for the industries that have developed, for the other markets, they're lucky then they can actually get to adopt this quite fast. Yes. Do you think that's why it also starts beating us in the sense of that you've not really focused or you've not really organized your house, but then around you, so many things are happening. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, the thing, it's, it's, um, it's an approach that, that we have to be really careful when it comes to adopting new technologies, because then uh, I'm sure you've heard of chat GPT uh -huh. and, you know, because mm -hmm. it's been all, all the rage mm -hmm. lately. Yeah. yeah? And when you, when you look at uh, such things, of course, you have to have the infrastructure to implement, but it is there. It's, 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 um, it's accessible, but at the same time, how you utilize it where you're not going to undermine the, the, the creative base. Yeah? But at the same time, there's a new skill set that, that needs to be acquired to use these technologies effectively. For instance, AI, for instance. Uh, you could do things like deep fake, right? Yes. Where you could, uh, you know, essentially make me look like, you know, you and vice versa. Sure. And then even our voices could be replicated yes. now with AI. But there's also AR. AR is essentially, uh, what we're doing here, essentially you and I, is it's a, it's a form of AR, but it's, it's sort of like an analog type of AR that is now ported to the digital. For instance, you know, uh, for those of you who are watching right now, or <laughs> for those of you who are watching, you won't see what I'm saying, That's but it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's essentially, it's chroma keying, That's green it. screen. Yeah. So it's a form of uh, uh, AR, it means augmented reality. Oh, exactly. So we could replace the background or whatever we want. But now, with uh, AR in the digital realm in the new in the 2023 and forward, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond, for instance, the, your, your green screen now will be replaced by um, by sort of like a, a, a crescent shape wall of screens oh, exactly. that uh, essentially projects your uh, scene behind you, whether it's a forest or or uh, or a beach, yes. where even the floor has screens embedded into it. So if if uh, if a wave is crashing against you know uh, against the shore, that's also represented on the floor. And the cameras are equipped with sensors. When the camera moves, the background moves, and like in real life, if you point your camera into a certain direction. Of course, you're going to have a different perspective. You're not going to see the same image yes. carried over. Mm -hmm. So you're able to pan, tilt, and zoom the camera into the scene. So this is the technology we're talking about, which is still uh, quite cost prohibitive, but it's actually coming down to the ground level where you could actually build such such a system at a very uh, 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 affordable uh, price. All these uh, technologies are there. They're affordable, but then again, how do you transition from what we are doing now to, uh, to where instead of traveling a uh, uh, hundred miles, you know, like three, let's say three, uh, 300 miles to a location to shoot, where well, you could shoot it right here in the studio, where the AR, augmented reality, will afford you yes. the, the, the capability to replicate certain things. It doesn't mean you're going to eliminate uh, location shooting uh, uh, all together but then think of it this way like in terms of like a pickup you want to do a pickup shot a pickup shot the whole cruise is gone you you've you've wrapped you need some b-roll now you can't travel to the location where you know with the whole crew again now you can go into a studio and set up ar and then re, re basically recreate the scene as if it were right now right there in the location the side, yeah. exactly yeah. So that's all that's all feasible right now. So these technologies are there. Now again it comes down to investments, to money. Isn't it? Yes. Pretty much. I, I want us I want us to clear this conversation like this, uh, legend. Two things. One, from where you're sitting, what should we look forward to twenty twenty three, both locally and internationally, but with a most trust on the local film industry. Mm. And when it comes to investments, who are we going to blame? Are we going to blame the sponsors themselves? Mm. Or are we going to blame the producers of former industry in Kenya who have not really done enough then in terms of marketing the business? 
Let's attack those and then after that we clear. Right. 